Hey there y'all, this is Ray with Ray's Guide. I'm going to be talking about two new ships in the verse and one feature that ties them together but also separates them because they operate entirely differently and have different problems. Hop on in there farmers, we're going to be talking about tractors. Now the first thing there is the new the C1 cargo variant of the Crusader Spirit series ships. And if you've already seen any other video overviewing the A1, then you already be familiar with about three quarters of this ship. The vestibule area with the major components inside are all the same. And the remainder of the engineering section forward there, the crew amenities, the cockpit area, they're all exactly the same. The only difference is that the area where the bomb bays were is now a cargo bay, when the remote turret is now a remote tractor beam. Now since this is supposed to be a hauler, how does it actually evaluate as a hauler? It's rated at 64 SCU, and if you let them do the loading, they will find this is done with two of the extra large 32 SCU boxes on each side of the central corridor. Now that's a pretty huge footprint for only carrying 64 SCU of cargo. The Hull A does it with barely a postage stamp size area due to external cargo. The Freelancer has 66 SCU and a much smaller and has internal cargo. Freelancer Max has double the capacity at a much smaller footprint still. And the upcoming Zeus 2 CL has double the cargo of the Spirit with a slightly smaller footprint and all the same amenities. Now how's the Zeus going to pull off that trick? Well one possibility is that like the Avenger, you must use the front exit when loading to the Max. So why does footprint matter though? Well, much for the reason that you might need a medium cargo ship is to go to places that don't have enough landing space for a larger ship. Now you might say, well, I'll just pile up more cargo in this middle area and the vestibule, except that you need most of that corridor in order to move cargo in and out, and it's your sole way in and out of the ship too. So I'm thinking that maybe the C-1 isn't just that good of a container ship. It's more of a ro ship for buggy-sized vehicles and brake box. Row row means roll on, roll off, and brake box is bulky loose cargo that doesn't fit in containers. So let's get to the actual task of using the tractor beam to get stuff on and off. The tractor beam is accessed by the right hand co-pilot seat. The deployed position is needed in order to have a good view of the door. When entering the remote turret, you aim to activate with the mouse. The distance is increased and decreased with alt and the scroll wheel, which is a slight difference from the handheld tractor beam holding down Alt and R and will then allow you to use your mouse to rotate the object. However, your mouse only has two axes, which equates to pitch and yaw. I haven't found a way to add roll to the manipulation, which is important if, for example, you want to set a vehicle down on its wheels. But the real problem is that the minimum distance of the tractor beam is more than the distance between the tractor head and the ramp or the edge of the door. So you can't swing something in or out of the cargo bay to the side or it'll hit the door jam, and you can't swing it straight in or out or you'll be hitting the ramp. Eventually I figured out a way to do this, but it ain't good for either the ship or the cargo. And that is to line it straight up with the ramp and then accelerate it rapidly towards you and straight down. You'll wind up dragging the item against the ramp with all sorts of screeching and sparks, but hopefully have enough momentum to get it past the halfway point and without breaking the beam, at which point you can hopefully complete the loading or unloading action without actually destroying the item or ship in the process. Now you think that sounds like a terrible way to treat your ship and cargo, and you're absolutely right. So what can they do about it? Well they can decrease the minimum distance of the tractor beam until it's pretty much touching the beam head. Or they can mount the beam further out so it would be possible to swing the cargo around to the side. For example, they could put it out the end of one of the tails of the C-1. The concept art of the Zeus shows the tractor beam at the end of a pole. Good idea, but it may need to be a longer pole than what they're showing. Which brings me to the other ship, the Argo SRV. And this ship is a nicely compact vessel with a typical Argo style. There is one entrance and an elevator at the bottom center of the craft, and this takes you up to and serves as a connecting hallway between the front and the back of the ship. Not only that, but this connecting hallway is the engineering section where the components are located. This makes for a clever way to bring replacement components into and out of the ship. They're already right there on the elevator. Now despite their seeming similarities, the ship tractor beam on the SRV works entirely differently and not in a good way. First, there does not seem to be any way to make the beam shorter or longer. It seems to be simply a factor of how heavy the ship is and how fast you are moving and some other mystery factor. Second, there does not appear to be any way of rotating the item at the end of the tractor beam whatsoever, short of tapping it against something else. Finally, the beam itself seems highly elastic compared to every other tractor beam. Moreover, the lighter the item at the end of the beam, the more elastic it becomes. 
For example, with a gray cat buggy at the end, it oscillated wildly, whereas with a cutlass, there was much milder oscillations, but which could still make getting the ship into a precise location like a hangar or in out of tight spots like a cave problematic. It looks like the design of the beam is supposed to have a couple of stabilizing beams to the tractor. Maybe it should have a way of engaging and disengaging them for times when the elasticity is or isn't helpful. I thought the best way to test out the SRV might be to use it with a scenario. Pick a presumably damaged cutlass black from the surface of Microtech and deliver it to a landing pad at Port Tressler, presumably for repairs, refueling, unloading, whatever. Now, at first I had been told there was a problem with quantum travel while towing, so I decided to try surface to Tressler with thrust only. And this proved impossible. No matter how slow and steady I made it, as altitude increased, so did the length of the tractor beam until well before reaching Tressler, it would snap and I'd be chasing my falling cutlass, which inadvertently did answer the question whether you could harass a ground location by dropping dead ships on it. The answer? Yep. After several failed attempts, including attempts at lighter ships like an Avenger, I just gave up and decided to use Quantum anyway. And yes, it did work, even though I had to reacquire a tractor lock on the cutlass afterwards. Then came several tries at being able to put this heavy weight on a long elastic band, feet down onto a landing pad. I did, after many tries, but and eventually this was the technique that worked. And then I tried EVA over to the cutlass to see if I could repair it, and I discovered that despite of the cutlass being mine, the station did not recognize myself as the pilot, so I could not access repair or refueling services or storage at the ASOP terminal. Eventually I went back to the ship, powered it up, and requested and flew to the hangar. But since the scenario was supposed to be representing a disabled cutlass, I had to regard this as a failed simulation. So there are two interesting ships. However, neither of them lives up to the promise of what you might want to do with, with a ship tractor beam. In the case of the C1, because the arrangement really isn't suited to get cargo in and out of the ship easily without risk of harm, I can't see how the ship's tractor beam would be any improvement over what you could do with a handheld or particularly the new shoulder-held tractor devices. In the case of the SRV, the tractor is difficult to control and support doesn't seem to be there yet for a great many things you might want to do with the ship after you've towed it. Towing for salvage seems possible, but not towing for repair, transloading, refueling, etc. It ain't. But there is still plenty of time for improvement on these first versions. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the bus. This is Ray with Ray's Guide. Now for an update on our giveaways. We have our IAE Week giveaway coming up for the winner's choice of the Galaxy Complete, the Master Modular Mighty Moving Medical Machine, or that brand new big box bargain bazaar, otherwise known as a Merchman. One entry per video, just be a member and be entered automatically, or subscribe and comment somehow, including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what Ray inadvertently discovered was possible to do. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond with Ray's Guide. Please proceed to assigned landing bay.